automated buildings, you know, you can see this young lad at uh, <coughs> Andover Controls writing articles about how IT is going to change the world. And then he reappears at uh, AHR Chicago a few years later uh, in, in amongst some, a lot of frankness and uh, introduces the NAGRA framework. And then he uh, knits together with Tritium a bunch of folks, and Mark was involved in some of that as well. So they were doing some community building. Uh, he keeps uh, drumming all of this into us as he keeps moving on. He makes a few other changes. And again, with uh, frankness, he falls into uh, uh, Sky Foundry and uh, uh, raises a few sparks and uh, throws a uh, haystack out. Uh, spark and haystack sounds dangerous, but uh, he throws a haystack out for all of the connection communities to uh, surround. So, uh, and he's going to tell us the value of connection. Thanks. Thanks, Matt. Um, so, yeah, I, I would like to talk about, you know, kind of the end goal. Where we haven't been in the industry since 82. And we've seen lots of different technologies come along for communications, right? And we all got, as engineers, I think, really focused on the bus. We had BACnet. We have BACnet. We have Longworks. We have Obix. We have Modbus, we have lots of different standards, and I think there's always been a wish by people, why don't they all go away and then just be one, right? And it's never gonna happen, because as we see, new protocols come, continue to come out, and they come out for a reason, right? You can't transfer a lot of data over very low power networks that are, you know, harvesting energy, but you can transfer a little bit of data and do something very valuable, so there never will be one. So you have all of these things out there that we have to deal with, and I think there was a time in the industry maybe on our maturity cycle, we thought, you know, battles and wars were the way to solve the problem. But they're not. All the protocols exist, and they're going to exist, and there's going to be more of them. They need to work together, right? And there's a number of companies who've created technology to help them work together. And the focus I have now is around the end result. Why did we want to have a protocol to talk to a device so we could get some information out of it? And yes, you know, I like to say we got a wish. You can get information out of virtually, you know, every product on the floor up there, and we're still left with this big problem, right? There's still another problem. It's that when I get the information, I don't know how to interpret it. I don't know what it is. What does it mean? And that, like security, I don't think we thought far enough ahead when we were doing these things. I mean, you know, humankind keeps building on the past, right? And we didn't think about that, and virtually none of the protocols carry what's called semantic information, metadata, to describe what it is. So I can connect to a system, I can make a query, I get a point name and I get a value, I might get units, and then it's, I'm left up to my manual effort to go figure out what is that, that where is that, uh, oh, it's a room temperature, oh, it's supplied by this zone, uh, who's the tenant in that space, where do I find the schedule, and I'm left with this huge manual effort that's blocking the ability to get value out of the data, so I'll go back to the and his comments, right? There has to be value here for anybody to do anything. And one of the interesting challenges is even with all of these protocols, all these communication networks, we're still left with this problem is the data is hard to get value from. So um, I was involved in the community who said, hey, this is a problem. Let's go do something about it. And we got together and we created a, a community called Haystack, Project Haystack where a bunch of other people who saw this as a problem came together and said, hey, there's gotta be a way to describe data, make data self-describing. And so we started an open source initiative on the internet called Project KSAC, where people are working together to define what's called metadata or data modeling, or people call it semantics, or people call it tagging, which they call it a bunch of different things, that describe the data. So when I read a piece of data out of the system, it comes with all the facts that tell me what it is. It's a room temperature served by this air handler on this schedule. With these limits, I know everything about it, so I can immediately consume it. And one of the interesting things in launching this community is that it spreads over all these other communities. So we have people who are BACnet users, and Lawn users, and Obix users, and Modbus users who all have the same problem. So it kind of shows, and that's why I was really, uh, you know, very much interested in, in working with Ken when he started this a couple years ago, that there's yet another community forming, right, around how do we use the data, right? So I happen to have been part of Obix, the Obix community, right? And so that, that's I view that as kind of a vertical community, but now we're trying to create a horizontal community to solve 
I would say, Andy's point, which is there has to be value. We have to extract value out of the data um, in order to get customers to do anything about it. So, you know, that's the area of focus. I think we all have an area of focus that we're bringing out at the end of our comments here. The area of focus that, that I have and that I've been involved with is right in the last few years is how do we make data self-describing so that it can be easily consumed so that we can immediately deliver value to the building owner with applications, right? So that, and what that will hopefully do is it's going to open up the marketplace so more people can build applications at lower cost and more quickly to do cool stuff. Think about all the tools we use on the internet today because there was some unifying way to get data to our PC, right? I use a CRM package that's based on the internet. I use email, I use file storage, all of those things that people dreamed up that were enabled by a standard way of dealing with the data. First, there was the protocol, right? TCP IP. Well, that's been around since, you know, DARPA did it in the 70s. What made it useful was the World Wide Web standards that made it so you and I could share data and, ex you know, exchange data in a meaningful way. We, we've got the same challenge with all these smart devices up on the floor that we've got to find a way to allow them to um, convey their data with meaning. And that's the other point I, I wanted to make, I thought I'd wait, is I think very few devices actually exchange data with each other. We know in a building automation system, you know, the VAV controller talks to the air handler controller. When you go up on the floor and all those different things, like, I'll give you the example of meters. Meters aren't talking to other meters. Meters are just trying to send data to some application that wants to look at it, analyze it, or plot it. So I don't think we should get overly carried away with all of the devices are going to talk to each other. They're not going to because they don't have anything to say. 